Hi everyone, my name is Anne Nguyen. And Hi, I'm my name is Don artist. Kwan. My name is David D. Pistol. Hello, my name is Fatuma. My name is Alan Andre. I'm Dominic. Chana Doll here. I'm Zara Anser. Zainab Hussain. Jovita Akahome. Peter Purdy. And I curated the show See Me Now with Ottawa Black Arts Collective. paint in acrylics. I use acrylic paints and the latest painting that I did for this exhibition is called A Safe Place to Land and it features me underwater with my twins. I paint myself in the painting because I felt like See Me Now was an exhibition that talked about um, your own experiences and I really wanted to share with the audience my own experience with you know racism, culture, um, my upbringing and it's probably my most vulnerable piece and I'm really proud to be a part of this show. I'm a local Ottawa visual artist. My work explores a lot of what's on my mind. It kind of mirrors what my experiences are about and I think about what belonging means. Um, as a Chinese Canadian, far away from my cultural heritage and how I hold on to those kind of totems of heritage. So as an artist, I've noticed that my work is evolving and growing into something that I can't even really define right now. The main thing that I know is that I'm looking to have the conversation, that interaction with the people that are interacting with the pieces. One of the main things in my artistry has been self-portraiture, uh, which I started off using it as a vessel to, of self-expression and showing you know, vulnerability. So the piece I have in the show today, um, See Me Now, is called Unseen. We're put in a society, for me as an immigrant, I come to a country and I have to you know, integrate into this country, find myself. That can also mean losing a part of my identity. Um, so how can you hold on to who you are and, and your core self without that cultural part of you? It's more than just art. Um, it's love. Creating murals for the public gives an opportunity for the community to take ownership of your work. And for myself, I felt like if I was free from outcome and I just started to create characters that symbolize people in my life, I might learn a lot about certain relationships and make realizations when pe speaking to other people and hearing their interpretations. So it was kind of like an experiment. Well, I've been doing this for almost 16 years now, so I've been influenced by a lot of watching television shows like the old Carol Burnett, Lucy, Sunny and Cher, all those old variety shows. But I look at them like kabuki singers in Japanese and all their makeup and pageantry and the over the top. So I said, hmm, if they can do it, why can't I? I just love dressing up and just going out there and spread love. That's all it is. Love, love, love. You get a tenfold back. I really, really, really love color. So all my portraits right now have some form of color in them and this color makes me happy. So I run uh, a cycling fashion blog called Exo Velo and it's basically trying to create a movement of people biking in style on their bikes and I've noticed there's a shortage of people of color who ride bikes because it is just something that is not done. Everyone likes to drive a car, it's a status symbol. I'm an Anishinaabe artist from the Algonquin Nation. I was raised Roman Catholic, my entire family was Roman Catholic. Uh, I was raised underneath all these symbols and tactics that were used and now that I'm an older person, uh, I've had an opportunity to actually learn history, to listen to stories from survivors throughout the residential schools. And I, I realized how deeply I was programmed not to learn my own culture because it was always put to me as extinct, um, as if the language was extinct, the practices were extinct. I like to put that on display in a way that I don't tell people what to think about my work but I like for people to tell me what they think about my work. The background is consistent with other acrylic paintings I've done in the past. And if you really take a close look, you'll notice that there are some recurring patterns of long lines, circles, squares, things like that. If you're from West Africa, if you're from Africa entirely, uh, you would recognize some of those patterns and 
some people might actually ident identify with those patterns as well. My practice is a multidisciplinary practice. I started in photography, but as I took my practice more conceptual, I explored different materials, and now I work in anything from textiles to plants to painting to projection and installation. Even though we have unique stories, I feel that no nobody really has a truly unique experience. Like you share it with somebody out there and just by putting that personal story out, you can connect to everyone else who's had those experiences as well. So in my piece, in my submission there, is that you actually see it's a combined portrait that suggestively combines, makes one, but it's of two generations, actually three generations. On the right hand side is my grandfather, and he's at the age when my mother left for Canada. To the left is my mother at the same age that my grandfather was when I left home. And with this exhibit, it's like what I want is open is that just everyone is common, not someone there with a political view or an essayist or anything like that. Just someone from the streets looks at a piece and identifies something in common. And I thought this was the best approach to just have a face that smiles back. Said, hi, I see you.